Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship. Uh, the 4th of July weekend, I wasn't sure what attendance was going to be like tonight, but I'm so happy to see so many of you here, uh, and it's a great opportunity to praise God. Uh, let's continue on with worship. We sing our opening hymn, hymn 829. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unholy. We have sinned against you with the heart, word, and deed. I will give it to them, and I will give it to them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come preaching to you. All the earth worships you. And they sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds for the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him. Who rules by his might forever whose eyes keep watch on the nations. But now the rebellious exalt themselves. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. I have friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our Old Testament reading. Our Old Testament reading tonight comes from the 66th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the 10th verse. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants. And he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from the sixth chapter of Galatians, beginning with the first verse. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh 
will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them, and upon the Israel of God. For now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand in honor of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first day, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we will wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Corson! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? you shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of God, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who would for us men and for our salvation. Amen. 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 Amen.
You may be seated for our sermon hymn, God Loved the World So That He Gave. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, two weeks ago, Pastor John Chris Tracer and I went to our English District Convention. Uh, Pastor John talked a little bit about it in his sermon last week. And at this convention, we heard some amazing things. We heard about a church being planted in Idaho. We heard about five new churches in Pakistan and even an underground church movement that's happening in Iran. And I think that's one of my favorite things about going to these conventions is hearing about how God is at work through the Holy Spirit. He's at work in ways we don't see, and sometimes even parts of the world that we don't interact with. But while we did hear some amazing news at that convention, unfortunately we heard some challenging things too. We're in desperate need of church workers. We're in need of pastors, DCEs, teachers, you name it. Uh, Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison, the president of the LCMS, stood up and shared a very shocking stat with us all. He said that soon, about 50% of LCMS pastors are going to retire. About 50%. Now, Harrison was not saying this to scare us by any means. He was calling us into action. We need to raise up church workers and pastors. And like him, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm just trying to inform you and call you into action. We need to encourage others to think about church work. So if you know of anyone, ask if they've considered it. 
plant the seed because you never know where God is going to water it and when God is going to water it. Now, after Harrison shared that uh, shocking stat, he also shared some amazing news, and that's that the cost of seminary is that uh, is extremely manageable. It's at an all-time low. Uh, there's currently a grant in place that makes tuition free. Uh, fun fact about that. Uh, I actually used to joke about that when I was at seminary. Uh, if you didn't know, I played on the preacher's basketball team. And since tuition was free, I joked that I had a full-ride basketball scholarship. <laughs> really a joke if you knew that there were no tryouts at seminary. But there we were. Uh, but in all seriousness, we need to encourage others. Now, as President Harrison was talking about that stat, it reminded me of our gospel reading today. Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In our gospel reading, Jesus sends 72 disciples into other towns to proclaim the gospel through words and actions, and likewise, we need to raise up people and send them out too. Uh, and I was also thinking about that verse another time this week. Uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Uh, our LCMS has a newspaper that comes out once a month. It's called The Reporter. And as I was flipping through it this week, I found an interesting article. It's called, In Times of Transition, Relationships Count, Family Matters, and the gospel prevails. In 2017, LCMS Youth Ministry partnered with LCMS Research, Research Services to study what works in retaining youth and helping them grow and thrive in the church as they move through transitions in life. Uh, those transitions can be going off to college, getting a job, having a child, and you name it. And I'd like to share some of those stats with you that I found uh, throughout this sermon. But listen first to what I thought was the most uh, intriguing stat. 72% of people said that at least one parent was the most influential person in their faith life. 72%. Notice that's not a pastor, that's not a church worker, a parent. So if you're a parent, know that your kids are watching. Is Jesus just a name that they hear in church once a week? Do you have devotions with your family? Do you pray with them? Do they see how important God is in your life? We need pastors, but you know what else we need? Faith-filled parents. And unfortunately, I feel like there aren't as many in the world as you and I might like. Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Okay, now I realize that very few of you are called to be church workers. Not all of you are parents, but we do all have an active role in growing the community of Christ. Now listen to some more stats from this article. 72% of people say that there is a person at church who is safe to talk with. 72% feel comfortable talking to one person here. That may sound like a decent number, but think about it this way. 28% feel like there is no one that they can talk to here at all. That's not a great number. Another stat. 55% uh, said that their home congregation ministered to them during times of transition. Home congregation, that's their pastor, but that's also members of the church. There are 880 members in this church, and Pastor John and I would love to talk with all of them and stay in touch, but we need your help. Last stat. Uh, after someone graduates high school, their worship attendance drops from 88% to 66%. I wonder what that number would look like if they were connected in this church, if they felt like there was one person here that they could open up with. I wonder what it would look like if you formed a relationship with them. 
In our gospel reading today, it is important to note that 72 people are sent into other towns to proclaim the gospel, but are there only 72 Christians at that time? No. There are plenty more. So what, what about them? What are they to do? Well, they are being sent to, not into another town, but back into their own community, to their neighborhoods, co-workers, families, and even to this church. You see, all of Jesus' disciples are sent. Jesus says in John chapter 20 to his disciples, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So the question is, where is God sending you? As you think about that question, our gospel reading shows us what it looks like to be sent. Let's take a look at that. It says, carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. What that means is, to be sent, you are to fully rely on God. Do not rely on what you have or what you can provide, but trust in God above and know that he will provide. That second part of the verse, greet no one on the road. That doesn't mean that you don't talk to people. It means that as you are sent, don't get distracted. So, so far when we have, when you are sent by God, rely totally on him. And don't get distracted from your mission. And last one we're going to talk about, number three. Share the peace of Jesus. That's an obvious one, right? Jesus says, whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And then later Jesus says, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. You are to share with those the message of peace. There is peace in what Jesus has won for you. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus has won forgiveness and everlasting life, and it is for you. The kingdom of God has come near to you, and it's not because of what you have done. It's all because of Jesus. You have peace in Christ. And notice what our text says, whatever house you enter, This message of peace is not to be shouted from a street corner, but it's to be shared in a very relational way. It's in someone's house. It's getting to know them. It's walking with them. It's maybe enjoying a meal together and telling them that there is peace in Jesus, peace that they need to have in one area of their uh, broken life. So let's summarize what we just talked about. Where are you sent? Rely totally on God. Don't get distracted from your mission. And share the peace of Jesus. There are a lot of people that need to hear that message of peace. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Today our gospel reading is calling you into action. Uh, There's a lot of work to be done, and there are very few workers to do it. And I try to call you into action by sharing some of those stats I saw. But I want to confess with you all, I was a little hesitant to use them. Those stats can make us feel very anxious. It can even be discouraging, and it can feel like there is a lot of pressure on you and me. Uh, I want her to someone at a conference give a devotion on this very Bible passage, and they shared some of those stats that I just shared, and they talked about how the world is in critical need of people sharing the gospel. And throughout the devotion, the person kept saying, the church is in your hands. The church is in your hands. And his heart was in the right place. He cared deeply for Christ and the church, and he was trying to call us into action But I'll tell you, his words made me a little anxious. You see, I looked around during that devotion, and I thought about myself and all my other fellow Christians in that room, and I thought, that's a big task. These hands can get tired. I don't think I can carry something 
that big for such a long time. And I wonder how many of these hands in the room have crafted hateful messages instead of offering messages of peace. Do we really have the taste for this job? The church is in our hands? That kind of makes me a little nervous. Maybe some of you felt nervous during some of those stats. Maybe you were anxious. Maybe you felt, I'm underqualified. Well, here's the good news. The church is in God's hands. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. Who raises up workers? God. Who fuels the church? God. He is the one that keeps this church going. He is the one who oversees it. God is the one who will send out workers. The church is not in our hands. It's in God's hands. Hands that do not know hate, that only know love. Love so powerful that they're stretched out in the biggest place that we need it. God's hands never get tired. It's a great thing that the church is in God's hands. And I think that's refreshing, relaxing, and renewing. But like I said earlier, we are sent. The church is in God's hands, but it uses our hands in the process. <coughs> and so, in addition to those three points, I want to offer one last additional thought before I close the sermon. One of the ways that God uses our hands is through prayer. I just saw in that verse I just read, uh, God urges us to pray. The church is in God's hands, but he's inviting us to fold ours, to pray that he would send out more workers. Uh, Pastor John shared with me this week how he knows someone who sets his alarm for 1002 every day. Why 1002? Because 1002 was the verse I read to you all. Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. At 1002 every day, he prays that God would send out more workers. Now, you don't have to do that exactly, but I do encourage you to pray to God. That's what it says in our text. Because we need church workers, parents, and faithful everyday Christians. Harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There is great work to do, but fear not, the church is in God's hands. And that's amazing news. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We collect our offering. today for Rachel Lewis and Noah Morsey, who will be married on Friday. We pray for Lisa official and family, the death of her grandmother, Evelyn Stevens. Uh, we also pray for uh, Beth Spencer, who has health concerns, and for John Ro Robel's cousin, Tom, who's in the hospital uh, recovering. Please stand.
We pray. Oh God, you sent Jesus to preach your word, and he likewise sent forth the apostles in 72. Grant us faithful pastors who receive your word with thanksgiving and deliver it without fear, even when wolves threaten to devour them, and who trust that in the Lord their labor is not in vain. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Lord, you, your son sent the 72 with the charge to enter homes to proclaim peace and declare the coming of your kingdom. Grant our homes to be places in which your peace dwells, that husbands and wives love and honor one another. Children are nurtured in fear and faith toward your name, and your kingdom comes among us. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, in this sin-sick world, nations engage in violence, injustice, and wrongdoing. Give peace, we pray, to all nations, that all people may enjoy the comforting goodness of your will being done on earth. On this uh, coming Independence Day weekend, we thank you for this nation and the liberties we possess. It is by your grace and blessing alone that we can know peace and freedom. Direct and lead us to live justly with our neighbors, peaceably in our communities, and joyfully in our land, seeking the common good. We ask that you hear our prayers on behalf of all who may be administered and judge our laws and provide opportunities for your gospel to be proclaimed without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. God of all compassion, in your Son you have borne the burdens of all mankind. We pray that you look mercifully uh, upon those with health concerns. We pray especially for Haley, Nicole, Beth, Angela, Darla, Mickey, Judy, Melinda, Vicki, Bill, Mike, Marsha, Mike, Donna, and Delon. We pray for Mary, who's recovering from surgery on Wednesday. We pray for those uh, also recovering from surgery for Shannon, Judy, Marsha, Dick, Tricia, James, Sharon, Rebecca, and Lewis. Lord, be with those who have health concerns for Marilyn, Ed, Pam, Phil, Marcia, Sharon, Jean, Don, Rodney, Dick, Darren, and Tom, who is in the hospital. And we lift up to you those who grieve for Lisa Bischel and family, for Bob Dustman and family, Rich and Judy Olson and family, and for Edith Walters and family, for the family of Edith Walters. We pray for these people, and we also pray for Rachel and Noah, who will be married on Friday. We ask that you uh, bless their marriage together. Lord, we pray for all these people and those we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, restore these servants with strength and healing now, and grant them patience to await the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Father, keep our hearts from greed that we may joyfully support your church and those who serve in your name. Keep us from pride of heart that delights more in what we do than what you have done. Accept with our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving the offerings we bring this day. Lord, in your mercy. How awesome are your deeds, O Lord. You have planted us and directed us to pray that, that you would send workers into your vineyard. You have answered that prayer through your Son and his church. As your kingdom draws nearer each day, teach us to boast only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, rejoicing that our names are written in heaven through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live in the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have had mercy on us and those whom you have created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. 
gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, that you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 God's hands, uh, and that is a, a wonderful thing to relax in and rejoice in. Uh, enjoy your Fourth of July. Uh, thank you to all those who serve, and uh, uh, praise be to God for this wonderful land. Uh, God's blessings every week. Mm -hmm.